Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a pretty outstanding little mini PC from MSI that's actually rocking a desktop class APU. So this thing is really tiny for what we have here. It's coming in at 2.6 liters and they're calling this the DP20Z. Recently, I was browsing Best Buy's website during a sale and I noticed that they actually had three different models of this unit. They've got one with a 5300G, a 5600G, and a 5700G. I happen to pick up the mid-tier model with the 5600G, and in this video, we're going to see how it performs. When I initially received the package in the mail, I was a little confused, thinking that this might be much bigger than I thought it was, but uh, they're just kind of overusing packaging here, because we really don't need this much room for a tiny PC like this. But it does come with a wired keyboard and mouse. We've got our Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth antenna, plus a SATA adapter, because we can add 2.5-inch drives to this unit. It also includes a 120 watt power supply because, you know, after all, we do have a desktop Ryzen APU in this unit. It's actually a 65 watt part, but all of the extras here will pull a little more. We'll take a look at total system power consumption by the end. But here it is. I mean, this is the PC itself. Everything you need is ready to go. Basically, just plug your HDMI in, power, keyboard, mouse, boot it up, and you'll be on your way. When it comes to I.O., up front here, we've got two 3.5mm audio jacks. We've also got a full-size USB 3.2 port and USB Type-C, which is also USB 3.2. Taking a look around back here, we've got a full-size display port, full-size HDMI. We've even got VGA, two more USB 3.2 ports, Gigabit Ethernet, and two USB 2.0 ports. So yeah, you could set this up vertically, you could also set it up horizontally, but the main claim to fame here is the APU. We've got a desktop class Ryzen 5 APU. You can actually get this with up to a Ryzen 7 APU. But overall, we should be getting some really great performance out of this mini PC. It does use SODIMM RAM, and this one here happens to have 16 gigabytes running at 3200 megahertz, obviously running in dual channel. And the RAM and the NVMe SSD are actually ADATA branded. We can also add two 2.5 inch drives down here. I would highly recommend using SSDs. All the mounting hardware and everything is included in the box. And by removing this rear panel, we have access to another M.2 slot, so we can add another SSD here. Really easy to upgrade the storage on this unit. So like I mentioned, they do make a couple different variants. This is kind of the mid-tier because we have the Ryzen 5 5600G. It's got six cores, 12 threads, base clock of 3.9 gigahertz with a boost up to 4.4, and this is running at 65 watts right out of the box. Built-in Radeon 7 graphics up to 1900 megahertz. We've got 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz in this unit, a 256 gigabyte NVMe SSD, and both of these are ADATA branded. Intel Wi-Fi 6 using an AX200 card, and this has Windows 11 on it. It was actually Windows 10, but I got the free upgrade to Windows 11 and just went ahead and did it. And remember, it's very easy to upgrade the storage on this. We can add two 2.5-inch drives and another M.2 NVMe SSD. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, obviously you know I love these Ryzen APUs, especially the desktop variants, and the 5600G is coming in really high on the list, right underneath the 5700G, but when it comes to the 5600G and everyday desktop performance, you're not going to have any issues with it. This thing will get you through the day, no problem at all. You want to do some 4K video playback, you want to browse the web, have multiple Chrome tabs or Edge tabs opened up. You can do some light 1080p video editing on this. Photo editing actually works out really well on the 5600G. I use Photoshop on it, and you know, I don't go crazy with the layers, but I've never had an issue. And with this little unit here, we do have Wi-Fi 6 with some pretty decent antennas, so if you just want to go totally wireless with it and not worry about Ethernet, then you'll be fine. I mean, we get some really good speeds out of this AX200 card from Intel in this unit. So really, when it comes down to it, for home, work, and school, and your everyday desktop or PC needs, the 5600G in this little MSI PC is going to work out just fine. But, you know, one of the main things I love to do with these mini PCs is gaming and emulation, but before we jump over there, let's go ahead and take a look at some benchmarks. When it comes to Geekbench 5, single core, 1493, multi, 7499, figured we'd see some pretty decent scores here, given that this APU is based on Zen 3. Taking a look at some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark, Night Raid, 15,854, Fire Strike, 3,759, and finally, Time Spy with 1,462. So we could definitely get some higher scores with faster RAM, but unfortunately we kind of cap out with this SODIMM at 3200 megahertz. 
but that's not going to keep us from testing out some PC games and emulation. And first up, we've got Forza Horizon 5 1080p with a medium low mix. We get an average of 68 FPS with this game here. And with all of these games, I would highly suggest turning V-Sync on, just trying to get it to lock to 60. Or if you have a free sync monitor like I'm running on right now, turn free sync on. You'll get no screen tearing if it has to dip under 60. Next on the list, we've got Genshin Impact, 1080p, medium settings, and we do get dips under 60 with it set up like this, so taking a few of these settings down below would definitely help out, like the MSAA and maybe turning Bloom off, but yeah, it would totally be possible to run this game with a medium-low mix at a constant 60. Still not bad like it is right now. Here we have MK11 at 1080p, medium settings, always like to throw at least one fighting game in here. This is performing really well on this APU, but from the settings I do have dynamic resolution scale turned on. I'm not exactly sure how low it's taken the res, but it still looks great and it's fully playable at 60fps. Here's Halo Infinite, and this is one that really does a number on these APUs. I had to take the resolution scale down to 720p, I've got a preset of low, and we get an average of 37 FPS. Unfortunately, when it comes to this game, we just need a bit more GPU power. Here's Cyberpunk 2077, 720p, low, with FSR set to performance. It does a pretty decent job trying to keep it at 60, you'll see it dip down every once in a while, but uh, yeah, it's really not that bad for an APU. Here's Elden Ring, 720p, low, and we only averaged 47 FPS with it set up like this. I really do hope they add an FSR option down the road for this because we could get a bit more out of it. And finally, for the PC gaming portion of this video, we've got God of War 720p low with FRS set to performance. Now we only get an average of 47 FPS out of it. But pairing something like this mini PC up with a FreeSync monitor does make a huge difference. You're not going to get that screen tearing, and having a variable refresh rate display really does make it feel a lot smoother. So PC gaming performance really isn't that bad given the form factor and what we're working with here, but where this thing really shines is emulation. First up, we've got the Dolphin emulator running one of my favorite Wii games at 1440p, and I'm using the DirectX 11 back in. No problem here with GameCube or Wii. Moving over to PS2 using PC SX2, upscaled to 1080p, DirectX 11 back in, really great performance out of this also. Now some of these games, the easier to emulate stuff can go up to 4K on the 5600G. And finally, PS3 using RPCS3 and the Vulcan back in. We're at 720p right now, upscaling really doesn't work out too well with the 5600G and those built-in Radeon 7 graphics, but at the PlayStation 3's native resolution or 720p, you should be able to run most anything that's compatible with this emulator. While I'm testing these mini PCs, I always have these plugged into a kilowatt meter so we can check out total system power consumption, and this does a pretty decent job. At idle, it only pulls 16 watts, average gaming is around 72 watts, and the maximum that I could get this to pull from the wall while maxing out all 6 cores, 12 threads, and the built-in Radeon graphics was 96 watts. Keep in mind, we've got a 120 watt power supply, so we're right there with it. When it comes to fan noise, this thing is really quiet. My Steam library is installed on a mechanical external 3.5 inch drive, and I could hear that thing spinning up over the fan here at full boat. But at idle, this thing sits at around 35 degrees Celsius. Average gaming was only 64, and the maximum through all of my tests here was 79 degrees Celsius. So we didn't see thermal throttle whatsoever on this little PC. 
So in the end, given its form factor only coming in at 2.6 liters, this is a great performing little mini PC. I love seeing these desktop CPUs and these tiny machines. I do wish it was using desktop RAM instead of SODIMM RAM. There's more than enough room in the chassis here, but uh, unfortunately when it comes to these mini PCs, everybody's using SODIMM. And 3200 megahertz is basically the max when it comes to DDR4. But if we had the option of desktop RAM, we could go up to 4400 megahertz, no problem at all, and would cost about the same as 3200 SODAM. But if you're in the market for a small form factor Ryzen powered mini PC, I could highly recommend the MSI DP20Z. This is a great little machine, nice and quiet, we've got Wi Fi 6 and plenty of power out of that APU. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If there's anything else you want to see running on this unit, just let me know in the comments below. If you're interested in learning more, I'll leave a few links in the description. And it'd be pretty cool if you could hit that subscribe button and maybe turn notifications on so you know when I post the next one. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.